is it's, there's one of two things that you can do. You can either put your nose down and go harder, or you can give up. I don't think if giving up was an option for me, that this would have been the sport that I chose. Well, I shouldn't be sitting here, but Derek backed out. His statement about putting your nose down and going forward or backing out, giving up, I guess he chose to give up. So I'm going to fight a guy with a better heart, and Rafael was man enough to step up. Uh, my name is uh, Rafael Basaldua. <clears throat> I train with uh, Team Evolution. Thanks to Spencer, he's the one who got me on this uh, sport. Joe Pearson is our new uh, jiu-jitsu coach, he's really good. Backs out for a pinch nerve the month out. Tried fight with a separated shoulder. Done it. Took this fight while my shoulder was still separated. Commitment's a big part of me and you, won't, you can't change that. It's one thing that I can tell you that I'm gonna try to do everything that I got in me. Because uh, I love the competition, man, you know, so. Just kind of gonna go with the flow. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not studying Rafael. I'm not training for him. I'm training to train. Once the, the, that cage is closed, man, and just me and him, and let's just have fun and show time, baby. Same thing I said there. Sorry, Rafael, but I'm gonna hurt you. That's what I do. Making his way to the cage tonight, Jeremiah Crazy Train Nelson out of Redneck Combat Sports. The record of eight and five. Stepped in to replace an injured Derek Theum, and, and whenever you have somebody stepping in on short notice, you gotta give respect to that. Oh, definitely. You know, he hasn't been able to probably train as much as he would like to to prepare for this, but it takes a lot of guts to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to go in here and do my best right now, even though I'm not probably 100% ready to do it. Exactly, and going back to watching tape as well, Rafael Bazaldua has plenty of tape. He's been around, so, uh, you know, even with a short amount of time, he, he could uh, he could have still done his homework. There's still plenty of fights to watch and, and get a feel of how tonight's going to be. Um, so, like I said, hats off to him for filling in. That's, you see that a lot, and we've seen that so much this year in MMA with injured fighters on all levels of the sport, amateur, professional. And it's nice to see uh, somebody stepping in last minute, really keeps the car going and, and doesn't mess up, you know, potentially mess up a whole lot of things, like, like I said, like you've seen. Oh, yeah, and he came down to the ring. You know, I'm a, I'm a student of the game. I'm also a, a, a WWE fan as well. He did the Triple H water spit. Did you notice that? I did notice that. And like I said, that's, that's an extra theatrics, you know. Some of these guys have been doing it for a while. This it may or may not be your last fight, your first fight. You got to make it count. You got to make it memorable for the fans. It's not just about the fight. It's about before and after the training, so. Oh, yeah, and you got to so, do it for you. I'm sure that's something that he probably thought about. I know I would. Making his way to the cage tonight, Rafael Bazaldua out of Team Evolution with a record of five and one. And like I've said before, I personally know Rafael. He's been around for a while. You know, even with that five and one record, it seems like he's just been fighting forever. Uh, no, one of those almost veterans of the sport now. And I hope he doesn't get mad at me calling that. I call him that out of the utmost respect. Uh, even at Team Evolution, he's one of the, you know, the teachers now of the newer guys coming up. So whenever you've got that, you're past the point of, of a rookie year to the point of your teaching now, you know it so much. And uh, that's why uh, Jeremiah's gonna have his hands full at night, because he does have so much in his arsenal, and he just goes and gets it. And just looking at Rafael when he comes to the ring, even last night when we were at the weigh-ins, he is 100% about his business. He wasn't cracking too many smiles. I don't, you know, just, just seeing him right now, he doesn't look happy at all. No. I, I wouldn't be happy stepping into the ring. He's got such a such a respect for the sport, and you know, he may not be one that does theatrics either because he just, he, he is, he's going in there and he is a true fighter through and through, and uh, it shows in his fights. He just, he comes out, like I said, intense, um, and then he'll have his fun afterwards, but it is business until the fight is over. And it's going to be a good, a good fight between the both of them. Looks like Nelson has a little bit of a size advantage height-wise, so how is that going to come into play, you think? You know, it, it's, it's going to be a little bit of an advantage for him, but, you know, I've seen the last, the last few fights of Rafael's fought, he has been at a, at a size disadvantage. It's still come out with the win, so when you're bigger like that, you also gas out quicker sometimes. 
So it could go either way depending on where it goes. But Rafael, you know, looking in great shape again as he always does. He does his homework. between Jeremiah Crazy Train Nelson and Rafael Bazaldua. Jeremiah Nelson in the solid black shorts, Rafael in the Jocko shorts with the Mexican flag emblem. Round one, here we go. You know, like I said, Rafael's not one to feel out very long either. It doesn't look like Jeremiah is. They're just, just gonna go at it like we just saw right now. Doesn't like there's gonna be a whole lot of feeling, you know, feeling, feeling each other out. Right. And Rafael knows, that, like you said, with the size advantage, he needs to close the distance and get in. And, and that also, is one thing that tall guys have on short. I kind of wonder if Rafael remembers that, you know, Nelson has an injury and if right. he's going to try to exploit that or not with the shoulder. Exactly, yeah. And Rafael's, you know, he's with the shoulder injury too. Uh, you know, they both have, have got some things on each other that they did their homework. They can see it looks like Rafael's already uh, grimacing a little bit. Yeah, it looked like a little bit of a low blow. No. Uh -huh. And also, you know, talking about Riz taking a few fights back, you know, he already threw a spinning back kick, uh, missed, and did leave himself exposed, landed, got a shot, landed on him, but is fine. You know, you, you, that's the thing with those big spinning things. If you land them, it's great. If you don't, you leave yourself exposed. He's not afraid to, to take risks. Right. Big risks equals big wins. that tie clinch again that we saw before right into a guillotine for Rafael and Rafael's out big knee from Jeremiah there's that tie clinch right there right behind his head you can control him Rafael knows how to get out of this too you, you, you snake your hand up behind and try to get one for yourself as well and he's out and there's that single leg again and gets him down but Rafael does a great job sprawling staying on top right there real heavy with his weight on top Looks like and he from could here, try to throw get a guillotine in throw or some knees to the head. Exactly, throw some knees. If you if you can do it, spin around, take his back. That's that's a big thing right there. Nice trip by Nelson. Right, he almost flips him over and back to his feet. Big knee, big knees and the thighs right there. Those don't necessarily do a whole lot of damage early on. They hurt. Those set in later in the rounds. It's also interesting that Nelson, being the bigger guy, he's not really using that as an advantage right now by taking it really close with uh, Rafael. Right. And Rafael, as well, is he's very strong, too. He's a strong fighter. So, like I said, the strength is probably even, even though the height's a little bit off. Some knees to the inner thigh from Rafael right now, or outer thigh, just to kind of deaden up the, the muscle a little bit. I'm looking for the underhook to spin around a little bit right there. Opens up with a few shots of his own. Rafael does a great job with the trip. He has him up against the cage. Last few seconds really of the round. Really trying to finish around all strong and make a statement. Got him. That's it. Catches him. Hey, wow, right give, at that, the end give of the that round. round about 10 more seconds and we would have had a winner, I believe. Wow. Saved by the bell right there was, was Nelson. So great ending. And you know what? Depending on how the fights go, um, how you finish the last 15, 20 seconds in a fight, 
can determine the winner of that round as well. Right, even of course. It, that's what you remember. Right, it's the last thing that the judges see, so they kind of forget the things that happened a little bit earlier in the round, even if somebody or your opponent dominated during that other earlier part. Exactly, so then it's like when you hear those claps, you really, if you can, you want to pour it on a little bit more. You don't need to go, you know, crazy and everything, but you do need to throw on a little bit more just to kind of put a stamp on the round going strong into the second. Um, Rafael did a great job right there. Niall Pena in his corner of Niall Pena Boxing. Royce Arnold, a great guy as well from Team Evolution. He's got a fight coming up. Um, so there's your corner, strong corner again. Um, really can make a big difference in the fight. Let's get ready for round two. It's a good first round, guys. Let's see it again. Time TV, you ready? Ready? Fight! And right there, Nelson just goes immediately into the middle of the cage to show some dominance. Um, not afraid to hop right in there. Either Rafael, too. Really, Rafael, when you see him kind of throw, put his head down and swing, really looking for big knockout punches. He um, needs to be careful when he does that because when he can run right into a knee or a right. kick and you put your head down. Right. So uh, that is one a disadvantage of that kind of style. But right. really, if he lands those punches, it's gonna, he's going to do a lot of damage. And also, I would think that if you're, you know, you're somebody who takes a lot of risks, that's kind of going to force your opponent, unless they're very well trained, to also try to take some risks, too. Well, and we're seeing that, too. Hey, he lands about a three-hit combo right there and then lands a shot to the chin on the way out. Right. Which definitely registered. But, yeah, we're seeing that with Raphael throwing some spinning things. And we see uh, Nelson, you know, on his bike, too, there, hopping right, around, right. trying to throw some switch kicks, uh, doing a few things of his own. Yeah. You don't want to be caught flat-footed when you've got a fighter that's willing to throw some spinning things. And if you want, if if Rafael pays attention right there, uh, he knows this. He can almost calculate when. Oh, there you go. He lands a huge shot. shot Nelson right throws a big kick, and then he comes in with the diving punch. So it's it's it is kick punch punch. And it's kind of hard to. I wonder if it's easy. That to dazed him. It needs to close the distance right there because that shot dazed him right there. You could tell it stunned him. I was gonna look for the triangle right now. He needs to pull that right leg over, and he needs to get his left leg out. He's very close to a triangle. Maybe go for a Kamura right there with an arm submission. Looking maybe looking for that arm right there to really isolate it and turn it over. Right. He's and on his side. A little hard to do on your side. Now he's on his back. And I know, I, I believe that Nelson had a shoulder problem. I'm not sure if that is the, the exact shoulder that he had a problem with. But if it is, you know, that's very smart on Rafael's behalf. It is. I mean, that's one of those things, too. If you've got injuries, some fighters, you know, are very quiet about their injuries. Because as soon as saw the other opponent finds out about it, you know, he's going to exploit it. And it's just, it is what it is with that stuff. Right. Nelson showed a lot of guts again by talking about it in his uh, in the countdown video as well. So exactly. he's not afraid. He feels no. like he's ready to go. And they both, like I said, Rafael is also coming off of a shoulder injury too. So it's almost neutralizing each other's injuries out. Rafael does a great job switching around, getting on top. That was gonna do right there. You see him digging that head right into the mouth, and really, that it's it's one of those annoyance things where you just grind away, grind the head, popping out, looking for the forearm down, keeps him down. Now like he's going to look for that arm right there. He's going to try to isolate that arm. Those things, now. those things, like you said earlier, were annoyances, but Ten those seconds. add up. And I'm sure that they can help you to take advantage of the fight. Exactly. And right there, they did. When he when he was doing that, he was isolating his head, you know, keeping it down. Um, those are the small things that really, like you said, add up. And the judges look at that. It's outside of the box type of moves. Now we're through two rounds. Um, how do you think things look so far? I believe Rafael is is up right now. Um, at least one, at least a round. He did definitely run one round two. Uh, he landed about four or five power shots, uh, two that really stunned him. And uh, I don't know if he really knew how much damage he did, or else he would have maybe rushed and closed the distance. Right. But from sitting here, I definitely saw the damage it did. You know, it just stopped him. It stopped uh, Nelson completely. So Nelson really needs to come out. Uh, pretty hard in this first minute of the round. If Raphael can continue to do what he's been doing and just kind of dictating the pace, he's going to go slide easily into a decision win. 
it also looked like Nelson did have a few opportunities where he could have possibly taken advantage and, you know, got some shots in, but he wasn't able to do that. So let's see if he's able to, you know, add the equation together, put everything together, and take advantage of that this round. Right, here we go. Exactly. Round three. Touch gloves again, show some respect. There you go, oh, lands big big. To the head. and he's, he's really going at it. Uh, it's Nelson, but he's leaving himself exposed when he does that. He needs to make sure he doesn't gas himself out right, but he's got Raphael up on the cage. Raphael needs to swing him around, throw a knee right there. Those big body shots from Nelson. Right. There's a and both of these guys look like they're getting a lot of good Rafael, information from their corners. Exactly, too. and Rafael did a great job listening right there with this with a single leg sweep. Now back in a dominant position, being where he is at out of the cards. If he stays right here, uh, he's going to get the decision win. But he could, you know, pull something out. He needs to watch out for for his long legs, long right. legs of Nelson right now. He could sneak sneak a submission. And those shots that Nelson gave probably did a little bit of damage so it's smart for Rafael to get on top right exactly. now catch his breath get his mind together to be able to finish I was this round just gonna strong. say too he's definitely getting a little bit of breath right now um, after that round so the takedown was at a perfect time Nelson is on his back right now but he's also getting a few shots in. taking some hammer fists to the face Rafael maybe wanting to kind of inch over watch. to the corner you know so he, there's nothing worse than uh, being on your back in your opponent's corner with the coaches in your ear See, that that's something that only a fighter would know and understand like yourself. And right now he's doing a great job grinding the face right now, grinding that head right down into the chin, just staying active. You know, Kevin Anderson, the referee's not going to stand them up right now when they're both being very active, uh, even on the ground. He's looking for to get a leg up, uh, moving around, does a great job transitioning right there. And now it's, now it's his ball game now. He's looking to... Looking for the full mount, really trying. To, we've seen him try to take his knee and, and trap the arm right. of Raphael. Looks like times. Raphael has a little bit of blood coming from his nose from a few of those uh, hammer punches that he got hit with a little right. bit earlier. And that's the thing too, when you see these fights, you know, punches. There's punches. There's hammer fists. There's all kinds of different ones. And right now he's really going for a Kimura. And he's if he tilts that elbow up towards towards his face a little bit, he's out though. But. That's a very, it doesn't take much pressure for that right. move to, to win with that move with the Camara. There, I know he's, he's going. Doing a good job of trying to stretch him out right, right now, too. Exactly. While he's on top. Looking for the arm triangle, too, is when your arm gets caught under your neck and you get choked out by your own arm. So there's a lot of submissions that Jeremiah Nelson knows and is actually trying right now. And a great time, too, with the round three and being down in the cards. Of course. And he realizes where he's at. And it shows a lot of awareness to yeah. say, okay, I need to do something right now. Exactly. And right there, when you cover the face, you need to watch for the fingers and the eyes. Uh, that's, that's something that's an unintentional, but it can be devastating to a fight. I've seen fights that have stopped from pokes in the eyes on it, you know, never really on purpose. This is going to be interesting to see on which way this fight goes. Exactly. Jeremiah Nelson did a great job in the third round, kind of coming from behind down on the cards to, I believe, you know, cap off that round. So he may have won that round. Raphael right. won the second. And, uh, that you know, it's anybody's ball game for the first round. Great show of respect by Nelson, you know, talking to the coaches, also talking to his opponent and telling them a great fight. You know, that's one of the things that I appreciate about the sport is that these guys, you know, it's, it's all business. These guys might talk about how they, you know, talk trash, say how they hate each other, but I think that's just, you know, gives them something to do before the fight, get you gassed up and get you ready to go. But at the end of the day, these guys are professionals and they want to be able to say, okay, you did good, I did good, now let's see what the judges say. Exactly, a lot of that, like you said, is to hype up the fight and when the fight's over, you're done and, and you want to, you know, have a, you can go have a beer with the guy, go, ahead, you know, talk about, what you did wrong, what he did wrong. It's, it can be a really interesting fight with your, or a conversation with your opponent oh, when yeah. you're done, oh, whether yeah. you won or lost. So you anybody's, anybody's match right here, and it's interesting to see job, what the guys. judges saw from their end. Um, like I said, I first round All right, right, either way. So.
Jeremiah Crazy Train improves his record to nine and five with the win over Rafael Bazaldua tonight. And I really think it was it was the, the third round. He went for about two or three submissions, and uh, you know that really showed the judges that he does know a lot of things and he's really going to try. He was he was down. He was down on the cards. Right, and like we said, a lot of times the last thing that people remember. Exactly. Great job and congratulations to Crazy Train Nelson.